name is Liz Woodrow. I'm the director of the Snake River Alliance. I first uh, would like to thank the Iowa Environmental Forum for having this conversation today. It's very important. And secondly, thank all of you for being here and caring enough about this issue and the events unfolding in Japan to take the time to learn more. The Snake River Alliance has been Idaho's nuclear watchdog uh, for over 30 years. We were the first environmental organization based in Idaho to identify clean energy as an area of focus. And we are a leading advocate for renewable energy and energy efficiency in Idaho. Our more recent work as a nuclear watchdog has included pressing for buried waste cleanup at INL, shining light on the efforts of a fraudulent developer to build a nuclear plant in Idaho, and galvanizing public opposition to Arriva's proposed uranium enrichment factory in Eastern Idaho. And you can find out more about those issues over on our table. Then Japan happened. I'll date myself a little and let you know that I was born, but I'm still too young to remember Three Mile Island or Chernobyl. It has been my fear since starting my work at the Alliance three years ago that another such event would happen. I was afraid of this because I thought it was rather likely. These events are devastating, and they demonstrate once again that the risks associated with nuclear power are unacceptable. They are unacceptable in terms of the threats posed to public health and safety, and they are unacceptable in terms of economic risks. Nuclear costs too much, so much so that the industry cannot compete on Wall Street. It takes too long to build. In fact, they are so slow and costly that they reduce climate protection measures. It uses far too much water. There is no solution to the waste, and the threats to our health and resources are far too great. Nothing Mr. Grossenbacher has said today indicates that the industry has extricated itself from the tar baby that is the failure of the industry. It was once said that nuclear power would be too cheap to meter. It is now clear that it is both too expensive and too dangerous to matter. But you don't have to take my word for it. Um, this is from Michael Grunwald of Time Magazine, the March 25th issue. He says, quote, even before the earthquake, tsunami, one-two punch, the endlessly hyped U.S. nuclear revival was stumbling, pummeled by skyrocketing costs, stagnant demand, and skittish investors, not to mention the defeat of restrictions on carbon that could have mitigated nuclear energy's economic insanity. Obama has offered unprecedented aid to an industry that already enjoyed cradle-to-grave subsidies, and the anti-spending GOP has clamored for even more largesse. But Wall Street hates nukes as much as K Street loves them which is why there's no new reactor construction to freeze. Once hailed as too cheap to meter, nuclear fission turns out to be an outlandishly expensive method of generating juice. So now to the topic at hand. Whenever I step into an interaction with the nuclear industrial complex, I prepare myself for walking into the looking glass of Lewis Carroll. This is the place where everything is upside down, where what is framed as rational is decidedly not so and where the outcomes you expect to get turns on, turned on their head. I recently had this experience in D.C. when I talked to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and our congressional delegation. This forum is framed no differently. In the looking glass, and in the midst of Fukushima dialogue, and the invitation you all received, is focused on the idea of as of yet untested generation four reactors. We are assured that um, the, the best measures have been taken in Japan, and we are asked to put aside our words and misgivings and leap back into the promise of nuclear power. Instead of talking about what Fukushima has meant for the people directly of Japan in a very meaningful way, and I, you know, I will acknowledge that, that Mr. Grossenbacher did share important information about Japan, but we're being assured that nuclear power is still a viable option for our energy future. We are being asked to turn a blind eye to a crisis that is still unfolding, that has been unfolding for over a month. Fukushima is now rated at the highest disaster level, a seven, many of you know this, um, just was in the news this morning. And it will be going on for some time, not clean up, but rather staving off for their serious harm. And I think it's far too early to assure us that the results of the Fukushima disaster are under control. Every reactor building on this planet is filled with deadly material. There is no safe level of ionizing radiation in the sense of zero risk, and that's a conclusion of the National Academies. Moreover, Fukushima demonstrates quite clearly that a billion dollar asset can turn into a multi-billion dollar liability in a week. 
J.P. Morgan said today that Tepco could face $23.6 billion in compensation costs. In addition to those staggering numbers, there is a liability to public health. There is liability to agriculture. There is liability to the fishing industry and the shipping industry. There is liability to the U.S. military. And a heavy burden will fall on Japan and the world as the result of a nuclear crisis that will take decades to clean up, if that is even possible. Now put these realities into contact into context for a moment in the U.S. A quarter of the U.S. fleet of 104 reactors are the same design as that failed in Fukushima. The Union of Concerned Scientists just released information on emails leaked from internal communications of the NRC, indicating the NRC doubts that some of the nation's nuclear plants, namely Peach Bottom in Delta, Pennsylvania, and Surrey County, Virginia, are prepared for a Fukushima-scale disaster. And those are internal leaks from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. With such a heavy liability, do we really think that this promise of a new fleet of reactors is going to come to fruition? Even before Fukushima, the supposed renaissance has remained a pipe dream at the mercy of government handouts and plagued with design failures. Is our conceit so great that we believe the United States is somehow safer and more competent than the Japanese? It is that level of hubris that could ultimately lead to disaster if we continue to justify nuclear power. It is too early to know even the majority of lessons from Fukushima. And, and please, let's pause there and not pretend that we do know those answers yet. But we do know, one, that reactors should not be co-located. Very clearly, there are too many reactors on that site. We should not use MOX fuel in any reactors, and this is being considered in the US. And I have an answer to test question number two. And this is the answer. After Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and now Fukushima, it is time to stop taking risks that we and future generations cannot afford in terms of our public health or our economics. We need to stop all new nuclear power reactors and phase out the 104 plants in operation in the US today. And I would give them an F in terms of technological viability in the wake of Fukushima.